Yeah. God bless you, brother. Amen. I, he never finished that. I said I was late for my wedding, born a little late, a little late for my wedding, if I can just be late for my funeral. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's the one I really want to be laid at. Really. <laughs> no, it was phone calls to the house I couldn't get away and hardly after my wife and them left early. I just had so many things and then people different places praying and just now entered in the revelation of the Lord came for a brother. Sister standing back there sick. You know what I mean. It's a go, 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 go. <laughs> now I haven't even got to shake hands with some of my friends here from Georgia and different places all around up in Canada. I just feel awful bad about not getting to shake your hands. And, by the way, where's Fred at tonight? Fred Softman. Fred, you remember that time you called me from Canada? Was coming down, I told you not to come by car. You come anyhow? Had a wreck like, tore his car up, like to kill his wife, family, broke his nose, and laid him all in the hospital. A while ago when I was leaving right at noon, Brother Ben here was standing out there, come over towards me, and Rosella came over there. She said, I'm going home. I said, Rosella. He said, what's the matter, Brother Branham? I said, I feel real funny about that. See? He said, anything going to happen? I said, I don't know. <coughs> it seems to me something warned me. She called me a few minutes ago. She'd had an accident. Oh, and so wow. no one hurt, but it's the hand of the Lord. And um, she was sliding. It's all icy in the north. And she stepped in Indianapolis and started sliding across the road real fast this way. And she screamed out, Oh, Lord, help me. The car swung back this way again. Come back and went into its right lane and started on all right. She went on up the road and she said, My, my, how thankful I am to get out of that because other cars is coming around on that same track. This is flying. So she got across the road. And then she stopped up there to, I believe, to something. She stopped to get her a cup of coffee or something. And just before she got out of the car... Another car slammed right in her back, another one right behind him, another one right behind him. There they all piled up. But said she was shook up a little, but not bad, but she wanted to thank the Lord and call and tell the church, uh, thank the Lord that she didn't get hurt or anything, and ask the church to continue to pray that she get home. See, she's a new driver. She just got her license. <laughs> so I'm so thankful, but... It always pays to take those warnings of the Lord. She said, well, she said, I'd miss a day's work. What's a day's work? It costs more than that to fix the back of the car up. Hmm? So it's best to, to make it stay with the Lord. Isn't that right? Amen. When He tells us anything, we better stay with it because He's always right, isn't He? Right, amen. Always right. Now, <clears throat> all this has such a, been such a wonderful amen. week. I just don't know how to express myself to God and to you people for this wonderful week. These have been some of the happiest eight days that I ever preached in my life. That is true. I have, I have learned so much of the Lord and His tender mercy and all that He's done for us and to see His Spirit working back in the church. I'm so glad to see the gifts begin to operate back in the church again. See? Now, once there, when you're away, it just seems like uh, somebody will actually enter in or just... They just pollute it, you know. They'll just start doing anything. And when you dishonor those gifts, God will dishonor you. Amen. That's right. You've got to make them right. And the way we want it is just when it's in order, the way this speaking with tongues, not just quoting a scripture, but telling something that's fixing to take place. And if you just keep being real reverent with that, it'll begin if anyone gets out of order in a church, the Holy Spirit will speak it right out and tell them who it is. And they'll, they'll feel chastised and go to the altar. That's what those gifts are for. And to see our pastor here, Brother Neville, he was a bashful, backward, uh, sort of a boy. <laughs> and I tell you, he was, it looked like he was never going to take a hold of it when it comes to Pentecost. But to see him stand up and interpret tongues and prophesy, yes. I tell you, he's come a long way. Praise yes. God. Thank you, Jesus. I, let us pray for our pastor yes. and see the gifts begin to come in church. And another little humble brother here, uh, he sure ought to be here somewhere. I guess he is. He's always in. He's a very humble little guy. He used to be one of the trustees here at the church, Brother Higginbottom, a precious godly man. And to see it, he's received the gift of speaking in tongues. Who would have ever thought that Brother Higginbottom would have done that? Hallelujah. A 
bashful, backward. Little fella didn't want to be no woman, no worse, staying back. But see, God can take a man like that and use him. Amen. Because he don't want to do it in the first place. <laughs> if he wanted to do it, he might come out a stuffed shirt. But as long as he comes out where he don't want to do it, maybe God can use him like that. Amen. Junior sure's always behind a post from me. <coughs> I'll say this. I've heard many people speak in tongues. And I think it all comes from God. Because you cannot make a sound without meaning something to somebody somewhere. You know, the Bible says there's not a sound without a significance. It means that there's not a sound without it means something. You can't make any kind of an utter unless it means something. I often wonder how that would be till I went to Africa and heard all them noises. And I found out then that it's somebody's voice. Sometimes it's an angelic voice and so forth. But Junie Jackson, a bashful backward, little timid country preacher out there of the Methodist Church, way down uh, down around Elizabeth, Indiana, way back in the backwoods, quiet, wouldn't say nothing, kind of backward, look like you see sometimes I won't take him, shake him, say, say something, Judy, he says, quit sitting there looking at me, like that. We'd sit down on a stump out in the woods and he'd sit there and say, well, I guess. All right. <laughs> I'd say, oh, Junior, I feel like, let me say it for you, you see. You're, you're too slow for me, see. And God gave him a, an, a gift of speaking in tongues. I never heard any more plainer language in all my life. Amen. Watch him in the church, see that little woman speak this morning, not knowing the other woman. Yeah. And one not knowing the other, and this and the sound of voice that was said in, and when it was interpreted, the same sound, the vowels, punctuations. Just the same. Coming back. And the message was perfect Amen. to the church. Amen. See how that is? We are to thank God. Now, don't get your chest stuck out. Amen. If you do, you'll flatten yourself and the devil will take hold of you. Amen. Just be humble. Say, oh, Lord, Amen. keep me head back. Don't never let me raise up four times. He'll never let you get out of order. If you do sometime, that won't, that won't matter. If you do, uh, the pastor here will I'll tell you. See, the, the gifts are not to be when you're... The, when we're preaching, usually if the gifts get to working good in the church, we'll have you meet a long time before the other service. Let the Lord work with you there. Because then, on this part, it won't interrupt at all. Now, while we're in the congregation, sometimes you have to hold your peace for a little bit. But if God's got a message, somewhere or another, He'll bring it out. See, Just let Him alone. But do it according to Bible teaching. And Brother Neville parents will be teaching on those things. Which we'll try to do it. I'll try to help him along as we can, both of us together, to bring it out and show how it's to be used. You feeling better, my Polish brother? Mm, that's fine. <laughs> oh, how the Lord blessed him. Eight years ago, told him something is going to take place. Is all confused. A real strict Trinitarian. And the Lord said to the date, there's a man coming. He has dark hair and brown eyes, heavy set. Don't turn him away. I'm sending him to you. I picked out a scripture just where he's confused at. Put me down a piece of paper and laid it there. After a while, here he come up. My wife said, there's a man out there. See, I, that's him. <laughs> Bring him on in. And he, he told me what was said to him and other inspiration of the Holy Spirit, how he'd always believed and held on to the message and so forth. Amongst his people, yet criticized, he stayed right with it. Said some time ago in the meeting that I spoke to him and called his name. And how I ever said that name, I don't know. He said I had to, to spell it out or something in the meeting. Said he's packing a baby on his arm and had a breakout on his face and said the little baby was cleansed completely. Yes, Amen. completely. And how the Lord, and I said, well, the thing that you need now is go down to the church and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I met him a while ago on top of the mountain because he come down and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now he's all satisfied, feeling good. Returning home. I hope he interprets for me in Poland one of these days, in Germany, in the back of that place is there. The Lord bless you, my brother. So many great rich things our Lord does. Just to see his, his mercy, how he's from east, west, north, and south, he's leading his dear children, coming together, pulling out, shaking down. So much to be said. Now don't forget, next Sunday night, our Lord willing, next Sunday night, we will have the uh, uh, next Sunday morning, rather, a healing service. 
The reason I say that on that, maybe then if there's too many for Sunday morning, I have Sunday night to fall back to, you see. Amen. But if I can get them all out Sunday morning, well, all right. Wednesday night is a midweek prayer meeting. Now, you people that you're around home, you folks, gather in here, have prayer meeting. Don't miss that. Stay right with it. See? And pray. Seek closer to God. Don't never let fanaticism get among you. Keep it's too much real to accept the false. Amen. 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 Don't, don't get on the wrong side. Stay right. I heard a familiar amen, man, that I've heard for years, Brother Russell Creech. They tell me that Patty was one speaking in tongues back there tonight. <laughs> Patty, where are you at? You here, honey? She's here. Uh, my, I wouldn't even know her if I seen her. But I believe I helped that child in my arms and dedicated her right. to the Lord amen. right here. And she's a young woman, me, he said, a young, beautiful, young teenage girl with the power of the Holy Ghost up on her. Speaking of, Russell, you are a rich man. Amen. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. Where's Sister Creech at? I haven't seen her. Is she around? Back there. Oh, Sister Creech, how thankful I am that God has given you a child like that. Why, you don't realize how, how thankful at the age where teenage girls are sniggering and laughing and going on, you know, a bunch of nonsense to these guys Amen. with a duck haircut and everything. And like Amen. that, and this little kid here with the power of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues Amen. to give. Amen. Oh, my. Hallelujah. How many men tonight, Pentecostal preachers, that would give their whole life if they could see their teenage daughter at yeah. the rock and roll party. Do that. Just, just value that, brother. I know what you're doing at the interstate. I've done the same thing. Worked a many hard day. But brother, to raise them children, but remember, God's faithful. He rewards. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will repay. God bless you, Patty. Oh. Honey, I, I wouldn't know you if I seen you, I guess, but don't never leave that straight path, honey. Amen. Never let the devil put any anything in you like a nice golden apple because it'll be a lemon. See? Drop the thing and leave it like that. Keep your eyes right on Christ, right on the cross, and keep moving on. For the hour is at hand. So many things of exhortations I could just say. The blessings of God. I haven't been able to visit many. And this whole week I haven't prayed for over 50 people, I guess, and the ins and outs, emergencies, and what's coming and so forth. But I've been busy studying. But now next Sunday, we'll be praying for the people and ask the Lord to come down and give us the great power and manifest Himself to us next Sunday morning, the Lord willing. Amen. Oh, I just hate to start on this church age because I know that's the last one of them. (laughs) Now, in this is going to be the the winding up of the seven church ages. Have you enjoyed it? Yes. Amen. Now, remember, I say this at the end as it did at the beginning. There may be many things. There may be many things that you firmly disagreed with me. But don't hold it against me, see. Just love me anyhow because it wouldn't make any difference what you'd do or what you'd say. I think just the same of you, if anything, more, see. And I think more of you. But I love you. God knows that. There isn't a man that could call the name of Jesus Christ for what I'd love him. See? And I never want any bitterness or indifference so we could firmly disagree. If we sat at the table and one eat one kind of pie and one another, that'd be just as much as right here, see, when it comes to fellowship with one another. We love one another. And if we don't do that, then we should do that. And if we'll never go no farther in God until we do do that. Just don't forget don't forget that the greatest gift of all gifts is love. Amen. Amen. Do I speak with tongue of men and angels? Have my body to be burned as a sacrifice? Understand all knowledge and so forth? I am nothing. So, but when that which is perfect, which is love, if all the spiritual gifts isn't martyred together with love, it won't hold. Amen. Any other martyr will break away. But love continueth forever. See? That is 1 Corinthians 13. Now, tonight entering this great church age. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Praise the Lord. Now, we may be about quarter after tonight, nine. And uh, I certainly am sorry that we don't have enough room but uh, to set everybody, seat everybody rather. But uh, we just don't have it. And maybe someday we will. But now, I want to ask you to do me a favor. You see my stand, and you know what it's going to cost me someday, see? Yeah. And the hour is close to hand. Yes. Amen. See? Now, I want you to do this. Always pray for me. Yeah. And remember, yeah. I have been honest as 
I know how to be honest to you. And I realize that I'm no kid no more. I'm 51 years old. And I, I, when my, I cannot go until God calls me. And I'll go the way He wants me to go. And that'll be it, see. Amen. But I must be honest and tell the truth regardless. Yeah, yeah. So I know it's a lonesome walk sometimes. But as long as He's with you, what difference does it make? Amen. Amen. Now, before we enter this great church age, I wonder if we could stand now for prayer just a moment again. That kind of lets you stretch and feel better. Hallelujah. On the closing service, is there how many here would want to be remembered before God? And raise up your hands. Yes. God, remember me, O Lord. Yes. At the end of the age, when life is all over, remember me. Our Heavenly Father, we don't have tongues enough to express our gratitude for the presence of the living God that's been in our midst this last week. For the things that we have learned of you. How you have revealed yourself to us down through the time. And how you have made your word so plain to us. How we've waited on you. And how we have, have tried to express our love and failed to do it, Lord. Because mortal tongues could not do that. To, for even saving us. And you, for even giving us a hunger for you. For it's written in the word, Blessed are they that do hunger. Just a hunger, it's a blessing. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Then you made that great quotation, For they shall be filled. Now we believe that, Lord. Forgive us of our shortcomings. Yes. And as we enter in tonight after this last church age, which is Lady Osea, after we have seen the scriptures and the history hit every time exactly right. So, Father, we know the quotation from your great prophecy here of this last age. It will be just as the other six ages has been. Father, I pray that you let the Holy Spirit come to us tonight now and bless us as we further wait on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. <laughs> if the Lord willing, the book will soon, as we can, Brother Leo is taking it off the magnet tape to go on to the, um, go on to shorthand from there to the type, then into the book. By the way, Rosella will have her book pretty soon, An Alcoholic Saved. All of you remember her story, how that the Holy Spirit called her in the meeting and she would have been give up uh, four of the greatest alcoholic institutions and turned away from hospitals that there was in Chicago. And the Lord Jesus in one moment's time taking it all away from us. She just goes from jail to other places telling people of how that God can deliver. Amen talking to the alcoholics and so forth. She's been by her testimony, won many people over to Christ. Now, the first church age, can you tell me what it was? Ephesus. Second, Smyrna. Third, Pergos. Fourth, Thyatira. Fifth, Sardis. Sixth, Philadelphia. Seventh, Lady Osea. The first was between A.D. 55 and 170. Ephesus, Smyrna, 170 to 312. Pergus, 312 to 606. Thyatira, 606 to 520. Sardis, 520 to 1750. Philadelphia, 1750 to 606. Now, it began the Lady Ocean age. Lapped over. And last night we got into the little lap. Now we're tonight take the end of the Lady Ocean. We believe that the Lady Ocean Church started in A.D. 1906. I predict, now remember, predict, especially you listen at the tape. I don't say it will be, but predict that it will end by 1977. That the church will go completely into apostasy and she'll be ousted out of the mouth of God. And the second coming or the rapture of Christ might come any time. Now, I can miss that a year. I can miss it 20 years. I can miss it 100 years. I don't know where it, but I just predict that. 
according to a vision he showed me and taken the time the way it's progressing I say it'll be sometime between 33 and 77 at, at least this great nation is going to strike a war that's going to blow it to bits see now that's pretty close it's awful close now, I could be wrong I'm predicting everybody understands say amen, amen. 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 but the Lord showed me a vision of the great powerful woman in 33, 19 and 33, it's on paper, how that Roosevelt would cause, he helped cause the world to go to war, how that Mussolini would make his first invasion to Ethiopia, and he would take it, but he'd come to a disgraceful end, and how that then the three-ism, Nazism, Fascism, and Communism would all wind up in Communism, and how many in here remembers me just keep having standing sit over like say, Watch Russia. Watch Russia, the king of the north. Watch Russia, king of the north. Watch Russia, king of the north. How many has heard me say this? Wave that over and over. The old timers you see back in the early part of the church. Just stand there and wave it over and over. Watch Russia, the king of the north. See? What he would do for all those isms will heap up into Russia. Then I said that this nation would finally go to war with Germany. And Germany would be built in a concrete wall. And that was the Maginot Line. Eleven years before it was ever started to build it. Eleven years before. And I said the Americans will take an awful beating at that line. Some of these brethren here was at that line. Brother Roy Roberson them and asked them what happened. Yes, they, did. they sure did. All right. But finally I said we will overcome and will be one of the winner in the war between us and Germany. Now, I said then, after that time, it's science would really progress. They did the media atomic bomb and everything. I said during their progression, they would make, a uh, cars would constantly begin to shape like an egg. Remember the big old hood on the 1933? The big back come down like this, the spare tar on the back of it. Look how it is now. See? Streamlined. See? Like an egg. And I said, finally, they'll invent a car that you won't have to have a steering wheel in it. I've seen a family going down the car road in a glass top car, great big fine looking roads and fine car, and they were sitting looking at one another, and the car was running by itself, going right around the curves and everything. And they've got the car right now. It's already invented. They've got the car. And I said, then, oh, how science will progress in that day. I said, then I've seen a, they're going to permit women and are permitting women to vote. And by voting, they'll elect the wrong man some of these days. And you did at the last election. There's a woman's votes that elected Kennedy. We know that. See, between the crooked machines and things fixed up, the FBI exposed. And how could anybody want to do something about it? Why ain't something said? Afraid yeah, somebody lose their job. You see, it's just a bunch of politics rotten to the core. That's right. That's all. Sure. There ain't no. Ain't no. Isn't no, excuse me. There is no salvation in this nation. There's no salvation in any nation. Salvation's in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. Now I'm thankful for America. I'd rather live here than any place in the world. Because outside of Canada, Canada and the United States is twins. Uh, we know that. Neighboring nations, wonderful place. But I, I believe I'd rather live here than anywhere I know of because it's my home. I'm glad that I am an American and thankful for it. But I tell you, it certainly needs a counter-revival. <laughs> it sure does. And it will not get it. No, sir. She'll never rise again. No, sir. She's gone. You remember about five years ago in Chicago? That's on tape. You got it, Gene. I said, they'll either accept it this year or they'll constantly drop down. And they've done it. And they will do it. Till she finally meet her in. But there'll be a powerful woman. Now remember, this is on tape too. A powerful woman, great woman. She'll either be president or it'll be a woman <coughs> representing the Catholic Church, which I think it is. Will take over here someday and she'll rule this country. This nation is a woman's nation. Amen. The flag was made by a woman. It's number 13. She started out 13 stars, 13 stripes, 13 callings. Everything's 13, 13, 13. Right on down. 13 stars on her silver dollar. Now everything's a 13. It's number 13. The peers in the 13th chapter of Revelations. 
completely 13. Everything is woman, 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 right on down. She took over all the offices. She's took over Hollywood. She's took over the nations. She's took over the offices. She's took over everything there is. Equal rights of the man, votes with the man, cusses like a man, drinks like a man, anything else. And just bait for the Catholic Church for the worship of a woman. Amen. They're already worshiping a woman anyhow. Amen. She's the best. Uh, immoral woman is the best bait the devil ever had. Yes. She's worse than all the bar rooms that ever was. She can send more souls to hell than all the bar rooms in the country. That's right. A good woman is a jewel in a man's crown, said the wisest man on earth. A man ought to honor a good woman. See? But an evil one is water in his blood, and his blood is his life. Uh, you men's got good wives. You don't know how you ought to thank God for a good wife. For if God could have given a man anything better for a helpmate, he'd have done it. But a woman is the best helpmate that God could give a man. But when they turned, she was the one in the Garden of Eden that Satan chose for his tool. He didn't take the man. He took the woman. Why didn't he go to Adam to give him patience? He comes to the woman to give her, see? Because that was the one he chose. God tucked the man, and Satan tucked the woman. And look right on down, and in the end, when Babylon is set up in the beginning, Hossus two Babylons, a woman. When it come on down into the age, now it's ending up the Gentile age, Babylon started like that, it ends up with a woman worship. Mary in the church. What a day we're living in. Now... Uh, the Lady Osea, that the Lady Osean age, the word means lukewarm. It's increased with goods and thinks she has need of nothing. But the Bible says that she's wretched, blind, miserable, and naked. What a condition. The reward to them to overcome in this church age is to sit on the throne with the Lord. Now, the uh, star or angel or messenger of this church age is unknown. Now, the first church age messenger, who was that? Paul. Ephesus. Smyrna, Irenaeus. Pergus. St. Martin. Thyatira. Columbo, Sardis, Luther, Philadelphia, Wesley. And in the, this Lady Ocean, we don't know yet, and probably won't know until it's all over. But I'd just like to give my quotation of what this angel will be, what we're looking for. Would it be all right? Yes. Amen. Be that we've got a little time, I just wrote a little quotation here, what I thought. The angel of this Lady Ocean church, they ended up, now he will be at the end of the age, like the rest of them. Like the Bible. You'll be at the end of the age. Not the first of it, at the end of it, because the angel always comes to rebuke for them for what they've done to the, to the angel of the church of Lady Ocea, write these things. Amen. See? To the angel of the church of Smyrna, write these things. See? Each one is to the angel at the end of the age. Paul, the end of the age. And on down, end of the age, the lap over. End of the age, end of the age. That's what makes it lap. See? To the angel, speaking what was, this lap over here. To the angel, the end of that age. See? Picking up, right here, made the lap, like stair steps going up. The seven church ages. Now, this angel that comes in this day, I want to, I've got something written here. I'd just like to read it. But he will be known the last part of the age. And because we are so close to that, so close to that light age, that probably he's on earth now. We don't know him. He will be a, a mighty prophet that will be rejected by the church world. For they will go right on in their sins and finally be spewed out of the mouth of God. 
out of the mouth of God's presence. I believe it will be one like Elijah. I'm going to give my reasons why. Now let's just turn over here in the book of Malachi just a moment. I'm going to give you why I think it will be one anointed with the spirit of Elijah. Now I want you to put on your your grace cap now. <laughs> Malachi, the fourth chapter. Now listen as I read it, you and your Bible. Now think real close now for the next few minutes now before we go into the church age. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubbles. And the day that cometh that shall uh, burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. What's he saying? He's speaking over to a day coming. Will you agree on that? Amen. To a day of the coming of the Lord. But unto you, now watch, now he's speaking back to Israel. Now what did he say? For behold, the day cometh way over that shall burn. But to you that fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in that in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Not the day that he shall burn the earth. We'll tread upon the ashes. That's the millennium, of course, see. Remember the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb, for all Israels with the statutes and judgment. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Before the coming and great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the hearts of the children to the fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The ending of the Old Testament. Now, Jesus said, Matthew 17.10. Speaking of this, all the Jews are looking for that coming Elijah. Now watch what Jesus said about it. Matthew 17, 10. We'll begin at the ninth verse. Matthew 17, 9. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell no man to tell the vision to no man. See, don't tell this, you know it, but keep it to yourself. <laughs> tell no man the vision until the Son of Man be risen from the dead. Don't tell it. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then said the scribes that Elias must first come? Why is it that Elias must first come before this Christ is to come, the Son of Righteous? Why did they say this? Here you're already here. And the scribes said that, that Elias would come first. Now watch. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall come, shall first come, and restore all things. But... I say unto you that Elias is come already. And you knew him not. See? He didn't say who he was. See? But have done unto him whatsoever ye listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. And the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Amen. Now, now, John the Baptist was the Elias that was to come. Now watch, I get back to Malachi, the fourth chapter again. Now remember, he said here that before the great and noble, terrible day of the Lord shall come, I will send to you Elijah the prophet, the uh, fifth verse. But I will send unto you the prophet I will send to you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the... What do we find in the Lord's day? At the end of the age. Amen. That's when the world is going to be burned. You remember how we tuck him with a white uh, wig on, you know, and, and his 
breast and girded about the paps. You remember that? Amen. And we proved by the Bible it wasn't a Sabbath day, neither a Sunday. It was the Lord's day. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. That's the day that He comes as a judge and will smite the earth with a curse. Is that right? Amen. And I will send to you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now watch the compound coming of Elijah. Now, if you'll notice, all Scripture has a compound meaning. But it's hid from the eyes of the wise and prudent and revealed to babes such as will learn. Don't you believe that? Amen. Now, hold Malachi 4 right there. And now, let's go back to Matthew 2. Just a minute. Just right across the page. Matthew 2. I believe I ought to have meant Luke 2 instead of Matthew 2. I got it wrote down here. But I was hurrying just a few moments ago and the Holy Spirit was in the room all in. I just had me a big time. So, I meant... Uh, 2, let's see if this would be a... Now, let me study here just a minute. Matthew 2. That ain't where I'm looking for, is it? I just a minute, I'll get it. You just let me have just a little bit of time here. Because I want you to be sure to see it, that the Scripture has a compound meaning to it. The adoration of Anne returned to Nazareth the Passover, the ministry of John. Now, let me see if I can meet Luke. I was reading somewhere, and I... I mean Mark instead of Luke. Might have been Mark. But I want you to get this Scripture so that you'll know that it is the work of the Lord, that He does do this in this manner. I'll tell you where I'm looking for. Where the, out of Egypt I have called my son. Somebody with a margin reading that could get it right quick or find it. Out of Egypt I have called my son. I have called my son. Now just a moment. Luke 1, 17. Thank you, brother. That's right. Luke 1. Mark Luke 1, 17 instead of 2. I won't forget the 14th. That's where that's it, brother. That's exactly right. Luke one seventeen. All right. Now now you can mark it down. Now what it is, it's out of the blessings of the Lord that was blessed, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. This man that comes forth will be taught from his birth not to drink or to have anything to do with sin like that. You get it? Yes, amen. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall return to the Lord their God and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers of the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, now we realize that he was prophesied and John was that person. Is that right? Amen. John was the Elijah of that day that was to come. Now, we also know that Scripture sometimes means two things. It'll say one thing like over there in Matthews where it said, Out of Egypt I call my son. All right? I believe that's what I was hunting for. Out of Egypt I've called my son. And then if you run that son reference there, he was, did not, it went back into Hosea, which did not mean Jesus his son. It was, was uh, Israel his son. Out of Egypt he called Israel. But it had a compound meaning and a greater understanding to it when it was meant and talked about for, for 
Jesus coming, which is a greater than, than Israel when he called uh, Israel out. All right. Now we also find that has in his first coming wasn't at the day of the Lord. Is that right? Now, back to Malachi. Let's straighten this out first. Coming at the day of the Lord. Now, watch his compound coming. His one coming and his second. Have you got your spiritual thinking ready? Amen. Six verse now. He shall, he'll stand Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Is that right? Amen. Now, we realize that that wasn't John. Because it wasn't a dreadful day of the Lord, was it? And he knew that it had burned the earth. So it must have been a previous or another future coming of John, uh, of, uh, of Elijah. Is that right? Because he said, I'll send Elijah and I'm going to burn the whole earth and I'm going to clean it off and you'll walk out upon the ashes. That's the millennium. We know that. If the atomic bomb shall blow it from pieces, then there'll be the earth will straighten up and there'll be a great day here on the earth and the church will reign with Jesus on the earth for a thousand years. Is that right? But before that great and dreadful day of the Lord when it's going to be blown up, I'll send to you Elijah the prophet. Amen. Is that right? So it did not mean John the Baptist in that state. Amen. Because the dreadful day of the Lord wasn't there. Amen. Two thousand years off. Is that right? Amen. Now watch the next verse. And if you'll be real spiritual now. Now this is a love letter. And you have to read between the lines. And then it's made right. You know what I mean. Remember how I said the scripture? Jesus thanked God because it hid it from the wise, the eyes and prudent. Reveal it to babes. Thou have often illustrated about my wife when she writes me a letter. I don't see what she's saying on the letter, but I read between the lines and know what she means. See? Because I love her. And I, I know her nature. And you have to know God's nature. And love Him, then the Scriptures stand right out to you. He reveals it. Now watch the next verse. And He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Now watch. And the hearts of the children to the fathers. See? Now when John came... As Elijah, he turned the hearts of the Israelites, uh, the hearts of the children that was then accepting his message, uh, the hearts of the fathers to the children. But when he comes this time, he's going to turn the hearts of the church back to the Pentecostal fathers. See, it's a vice versa there. You get it? I read it. Now listen close now. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. The old orthodox priest. He's going to tell them that, uh, why God's able these stones should have raised children unto Abraham. Amen. Don't you think that you can see? Now he's going to take the hearts of the old callous orthodox priest and turn their hearts to the faith that the children had here. Amen. See? Now all these has been baptized or waiting for the coming Messiah. And who's warned you, you generation of vipers, to flee from the wrath to come? Oh, my. See, he's turning the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the hearts of the children to the fathers. Now, when this great Elijah comes in the end of this age, he'll be taking the message of Pentecost to turn the children to the faith of the fathers. Because he'll be rebuking them because that they didn't keep this same faith that was back there at the beginning. Amen. Now, I believe we pretty well realize it's going to be Elijah, don't we? Now, we know it, and it has. Now, I see the dreadful day of the Lord ain't come. I often wondered, would this man just be a preacher then? Elijah had done all miracles. No preaching. But when his spirit was up on John, it done all preaching and no miracles. Amen. Why? Jesus was going to follow him. Amen. He'd do the miracles, for the Son of Righteousness shall rise, he said, with healing in his wings. Amen. So John had no need of doing miracles. He just announced the coming of the Christ. And they, now remember, and this John, or this Elijah that will come, will be misunderstood. Amen. He'll be such a great, powerful man before the Lord until people think he's actually the Messiah. Because his very best friend said to him, You're the Messiah. He said, I'm not worthy to lose his shoes, but he's coming after me. 
because they were under expectation then to see a Messiah. They thought the Messiah was coming. When they seen this great phenomenon rise up among them, they said, He is the Messiah. John said, I'm not Him, but He's coming after me. <laughs> oh my, you get it? So His close friends will think He is the Messiah. Now, notice another thing will take place in the nature of this. He'll come just before the Lord's day. Now, the earth never burnt in the days of John. So it is in the future. When He comes the first time, He only preached. The second time, He, uh, he will both do preaching and signs. Amen. Amen. Promised by Jesus Christ. All right. Now, let us look at the nature, what it will be, the nature of this prophet that's coming out. We're satisfied that the angel of this last church age predicted from the Old Testament down. Now, the rest of them wasn't. Paul, Arrhenius, they wasn't predicted. But this last age at the end of the consummation, the end of the world, it'll be such a tremendous time that we got just ahead of us So this angel of this age was predicted all the way back in the Scripture, the old Scriptures, the ending up of this age. It's Elijah, a great anointed one. Now watch. What kind of a nature will Elijah have? First, he'll be a mighty prophet, true to the Word of God. For Elijah was true. John was true. That's right. Doing signs and wonders will turn the hearts of the children back to the faith of the Pentecostal fathers. He will hate denominations like Elijah did. That's right. He will. I think we just got the thing started for him now. About time he gets to come. He'll hate denominations. Elijah hated them. And so did John hate the nomination. John said, don't come think now we got Abraham to our father, you Pharisees and Sadducees, you bunch of vipers. Snakes in the grass, other words. For I tell you, God's able these stones to rise children to Abraham. Amen. Elijah said, they've all gone astray. Every one of them, nobody left but me alone. <laughs> oh my. He will also hate fancy women. <laughs> Elijah did. Amen. Jezebel. Is that right? Amen. John did. Herodia. Amen. Both them prophets. The spirit, the same spirit. Amen. They hated the denominational world, the church world. They hated also fancy, no good women. They, something in their spirit cried out against the thing. Amen. Jezebel was after Elijah's head was going to cut off and she also had John's head cut off. Herodia did. Both of them. This prophet will be a lover of the wilderness. Like Elijah. He lived in the wilderness. Alone. John in the wilderness. Alone. Then we know it's going to be Elijah. All right. I'm, this prophet will be one that will stay with the true word of God. Yes, he'll stay with it. Oh, the word. What to? To restore back a faith to the Ephesus church. That's been lost all this time. Amen. Faith in a church that had an open door set before it and rejected it. Not a learned person. Elijah was not a learned person. The Tishbite. John was not a learned person. Luke 1.67 The Bible said that he was that the child was in as soon as he was born, he tucked to the wilderness, was in the wilderness till the day he was showed to Israel. Amen. That's right. One, uh, Luke 1, 67 to the 80th verse, if you want to mark it down. This prophet will also be a moody sort of a guy. Elijah, after he had a great meeting, nobody could get along with him. <laughs> Elijah had spells when he went out there and called far down out of the heaven and burn up the altars of Baal and everything. He ran out in the wilderness and said, Lord, I'm no better than my fathers. Let me die. Is that right? And John, he, he sat on a juniper tree and after the great revival. Now, he wanted to die. And John, when they cast him in prison, this foul woman, 
He sat back there and began to get moody. I believe Pimmerman or one of them said his eagle eye got filmed over in the jail. He sent some of his disciples and why well, he declared so there's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. John saw the pillar of fire hanging over him like a dove and come down, settled up on him, witnessed it all and said, that's the Lamb of God. And said, I have need to be baptized you and why are you coming to me? Jesus said, suffer to be so now. But when he put him in prison, he gets down in the dumps real quick. See? Kind of hard. Can't hardly pick him up. And when they did, he said, go ask him if he really is the one or should we look for another to come? <laughs> Just exactly like Elijah did. See? Just the same. Big sort of a moody sort of fellow. So we feel sorry for him because we know what that is. All right. Now. Now. At the, um, the church, <laughs> at his manifestation, I better leave that alone. <laughs> at his manifestation, the, uh, the church, when he makes himself known, this mighty Elijah that God will send to us, when he makes himself known, like Elijah did, the church was ready to be delivered was delivered out of the hands of paganism. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Just when he come up there and said, we'll Amen. prove who's God. Amen. Elijah delivered the church. Amen. And John, just as John did, he said when he seen Jesus, he said, I must decrease and he must increase. John started preaching and made himself going just before the coming of the Lord. Amen. Right at the end, the manifestation. All right. Now, we find out that Elijah must mean that it's age to this church to prove that it was Elijah. Elijah, after he had given his prophecy, Elijah did not have to die. He was translated and was taken up into heaven, a type of the church at the end of this Elijah that will come at the end of his time, the church will go in the rapture without going through the shadows of death. It'll be the rapture. I believe the great Elijah, the great one that's to come, will be the anointed Elijah that's prophesied for the last days. Amen. I think he will be, when he comes, the angel or the messenger to the church in the last days. A rejected, degraded people as this church will get into and is already, I think Elijah is promised in the Bible. I think we can understand that. That Elijah was the one that was promised in the Bible to come in this day. Do you believe that? Amen. Now, let's turn now to Lady Osea. And we'll see what our Lord has to say to us tonight about Lady Osea. Lady Osea. All right. The salute to the church. Unto the angel of the Lord, the 14th verse of the 3rd chapter of Revelation. Unto the angel of the Lord of Lady Osseus, write these things which saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, and the beginning of the creation of God. Oh my. We got all we had all night on that right there. How the Lord would reveal that to us. Watch. The Amen is the last. He's appeared all the way down to in different things, but here's the last church age where it says, I am, this is a finish. I am the last. Now to show that he was the first also as he was, he's the beginning of the creation of God. Amen. Oh, Amen. You catch it. Yes. Yes. See? How could God be created and he's a spirit? Amen. How could he be? He's, he is eternal. Amen. He never was created. He never will be created because He was God at the beginning. Amen. But He that is the beginning of the creation of God was Jesus Christ when He was made manifest, when God Amen. lived in Him. Amen. He is God's creation. Amen. Oh, See, the first and the last, the Amen. Amen. The beginning of the creation of God. When God created Himself a body and come down and lived in it, that's the beginning of the creation of God. Amen. See? Oh, isn't He wonderful? Amen. Now we find that the first... He showed his deity right here. I am the Almighty. Yeah. I am he that was, which is, and shall come the Almighty to the church of Ephesus. He said it three times. Is that right? Yeah. Comes right on over to the lady of sin and said, I'm the Amen. 
I was the first back there. I'm the last over here. And I am the beginning of the creation of God. Amen. Through the church ages I will have you learn that I am God. Amen. Amen. God created a man form. I'm the beginning of Amen. the creation of God. <laughs> that would make a Presbyterian shout. Just think of it. <laughs> beginning of the creation of God. Now, oh, oh, how I like that. The creation of God. When God was created, when God was made flesh in Jesus Christ and dwelt among us. Now, now the next verse would be to the other churches. Come in. But He didn't come in this church. He had a complaint against it, not a command. Right. Amen. He didn't come in this for nothing. This lady was seeing her age. With all the light that they had and went back on it, they didn't need any commanding. <laughs> they needed a rebuke and they got it. <laughs> he had a complaint for this church. Not a co command. Now, I'll read the 15th and 16th verse here now. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold or hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. In other words, don't, don't just be lukewarm. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Mm. Oh, is that a command? That's a rebuke Amen. to this ungodly lady of sin age, the worst of the whole bunch. All the rest of them are the torments and everything they had. They had nothing. They was poverty stricken, wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins and destitute and sawed and burnt to death and fed the lions and everything else and still helped the faith. Amen. And this bunch is rich and have need of nothing and everything else and a prostitute. Amen. Now, we got a great big lesson. I hope the Lord helps us in. He, he said, because you're neither hot or cold, lukewarm like milk. See? A good cold milk's good, isn't it? Hot milk's good for you, but lukewarm milk will make you vomit. I remember one night I got sick down the river about 25 years ago. I was in a little shanty boat living down there. I got sick and I come up my brother-in-law to take me over to Dr. Eisler. So what's the matter? I said, I'm so sick at my stomach. So drink a glass of warm milk. Oh, brother. <laughs> Lukewarm milk. It made me sick. So I just cleaned it all out while I was on the inside. Now God said, I'd rather you be hot, real red hot, or freezing. Be one or the other. Don't get lukewarm because you make me sick. <laughs> That's what this church age does for God makes you sick. Either be don't eat, don't be red either be red hot or don't be lukewarm, warm or hot, cause you make me vomit. The chilliness of the England church in the days of John Wesley drove him to have meetings elsewhere because it was cold, chilly. The chilliness of the Methodist church caused William Booth to become a red hot salvation. <laughs> See, God said, if you won't come and repent, I'll remove the candlestick. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it out. Give it to somebody else. So when the Methodist church would receive John Wesley's sanctification, William Booth come right up with the Salvation Army and tuck her right on. That's right. Yeah. Why? They organized it. That's exactly. Made an organization out of it. God said, I hate the thing. So the, William Booth come right along and picked it up in the Salvation Army. Then what did he do? The same thing. Amen. Turn around and organize it again. After him come the Camelites and they existed a while and John Smith for the Baptist and after that come the Nazarenes and after the Nazarenes come Pentecost. Nazarenes, what they do? Fix theirs up the same way, denominate it. What come in that time? A few little branches, Church of God and so forth, grow down there. What they do? Organize. Just let them go. Along come the Pentecostals with the latter rain blessing. What they do? Organize. We just let them go. That's right. Now we're going to get down here at the end. You get something real strong in a few minutes. Amen. All right. All right. He wants you red hot or, or freezing, one or the other. Don't be lukewarm. Just don't pretend something that you haven't got. Either be on fire for God or go on back into the, in a, an organization. Don't, uh, don't be lukewarm. It's the same thing now. That's the same thing taking place in, the, in this church this year. He wants you either hot or cold. Amen. Don't want no lukewarm. That's why Pentecost has got to a lukewarm condition. Now get on the piano once in a while and a few drums and bang around a little bit and get enough music. Somebody get up and kind of, you know, kind of saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Uh -huh, and the music goes down. Uh -huh. 
Oh, my. <laughs> this makes God sick at his stomach. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. There's not much going on then as a, as a red hot revival going on in them. But they had uh, plenty of mechanical machinery in this church, you see, because they was rich and all oh, was getting uh, together and making big meetings and everything. They was having a good time in this church. That's all true, but it's all mechanical machinery. But uh, no warmth of the Holy Ghost. See, look here what he said in here, see. I know thy works, thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. And because you're lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. See? Now I said, I would that you were cold or hot. And because you're not, uh, I just have to get rid of you. That's all. Just sweep you out of my mouth. Now they had plenty of money. They had great buildings. They had great things going on. But they didn't have no warmth of the Holy Spirit. Oh, they had a, uh, a regime. Oh, my. They got a united church together. Boy, they got the biggest buildings they ever had and the things going on. But no Holy Spirit, see. That's what God sent for the church, the Holy Spirit. Now, as we continue on in this 16th verse, they have all kinds of committees. Oh, we got a great regime of that. The old ladies' aid society and the, the young man's pinochle game and, and the bunco game on Friday night and uh, the basketball game on Sunday afternoon and all oh, the baseball game on so and so. And oh, we just got the, the man's uh, chattering society and oh, we got all kinds of things. I tell you, she's loaded down societies and clubs and beatings and whatever more. But no warmth of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, you've got a big regime, but you haven't got nothing there to warm up. Amen. You're warming up to the world, but not to God. Amen. That's why you're lukewarm. Hallelujah. Oh, you got more members than you ever had. Sure, boy. Well, we get a million more in 44, said the Baptist, but what have you got? A big machine. Amen. Right in the same church where that remark made. They had to dismiss 15 minutes to give the pastor a chance to go outside and all the deacons and all of them smoke and come back in again. See? There you are. The Bible plainly condemns that stuff if you defile this body. The doctors condemn it and says it's full of cancer. Then they'll get on the radio and say, a thinking man's filter. As Billy Graham said, he's a fool to think that way. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking man's filter. A thinking man wouldn't smoke it at all. Amen. That's right. Amen. You take the second thought. Amen. But he tells the women it makes them real skinny, you know, so they can wear some of these new kind of dresses they got. Boy, that sells it. More women smoke cigarettes than there is man now. And a woman will smoke three to one cigarettes to a man. That's exactly right. Because she wants to get thin. She don't realize that's TB and cancer and stuff making her that way. Amen. This baby form coming into her, eating her up like that, killing her. Not a thing can come out of it but evil. That's right. See, but that's, it's a thinking man's filter. <laughs> oh, my. No, no. Oh, they say, but we have, Brother Branham, I defy that. We got great meetings. Look what Billy Graham's had across the country. Oh, sure, a big regime. Hard evangelists, paid song leaders. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, they hard evangelists. Well, how much will you give me if I come over that revival? Amen. Well, if you can't produce so many thousand dollars, I won't come at all. That's right. And who are you going to let lead the singing? Well, you go and hire so-and-so. He's a great soloist. You hire him. To, he'll draw half my crowd. Amen. He will himself. Amen. Paid soloist. Paid advances. Why, well, it comes to a place that soul saving is a business. Right. Soul saving is not a business of the church. That's it's the right. power of the Holy Ghost in the church. Amen. Soul saving Hallelujah. is not a business. Don't buy it with money. No, sir. No... All of it is is works. Works, works. Paid evangelists, paid song leaders, paid choirs. Everything else. God don't want that. It's all works. Amen. God don't want works. He wants the Holy Spirit working in you. Amen. That's right. Amen. Glory. 17th verse says, Because I say I am rich, increased in goods, and have need for nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched. Oh. Knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, Poor, blind, and naked. Mm, mm. They thought they were rich, this Pentecostal and us last age churches. They thought, and outwardly they were. Yes, sir. They are rich. Just think of the church used to be a few years ago, stood out on the corner, cast about from place to place. 
had a hard time. But now they got some of the biggest buildings there is. You see where the assemblies of God out here used to have their place in an ordinary wooden building, something like this year, and now they're putting up a six million dollar building. And they say Jesus is coming right away. <laughs> Your works prove that you don't believe that. That's right. Amen. That's right. It's hypocrisy. Yeah. Building million dollar buildings and things like that and saying Jesus is coming right away. Amen. And poor missionaries on the field without shoes on their feet. Real God fearing missionaries. Amen. No shoes on their feet and live off of two rations of rice a week. Eat two times a week to pack the gospel through jungles and things like that to take it to their brethren. And we building six million dollar buildings in a church with big stained glass windows and everything else. And put it on that. Oh, you even got so much money that sometimes they got loan associations right in their churches. Amen. That's right. Amen. Doctor in there to examine their evangelists or their missionaries. And somebody wants to go to the field, they give him a doctor's examination to see if he, the psychiatrist to see if he's, oh, if he's mentally got his IQs right, you see. The Holy Ghost examines that. Amen. You don't need a psychiatrist. Amen. But you're rich, you have need of nothing. Oh, sure, you got plenty of money. Outwardly, plenty rich. A large building, stained glass windows, and eloquent preachers. Oh, my. My, I tell you, mm, they're really eloquent. They stand talk all night and say nothing. See? When they come up, I mean about things they ought to say, see? Stand up and some of this stuff to talk about, and a little so-and-so and miss so-and-so, and you know how it is. Paid singers? That's right. All right, but come into the pulpit, eloquent preachers, if they are dressed in a tuxedo suit with a collar turned around and some kind of a frock tail coat on, while their congregation feels real embarrassed. And those singers come out there, them women, short bobbed hair like Jezebel, enough paint on their face to paint a barn. As soon as you get that robe off, they wear shorts and man's clothes. And the Bible said if a woman puts on a garment pertains to a man, it's abomination That's in his right. sight. Amen. Walk down the street with their nose up, it rain to drown them. Smart Alex, arrogant, high tempered, Jesse Bells. That's the reason we ain't no revival. Amen. It's a big piece of machinery work. All oh, might have a voice like an archangel, and God will make you answer for that. Amen. These Elvis Presleys and Amen. so forth and Ernie Fords are Ever what they call them out here with these fine voices and using it for the devil? God said, I'll require that at their hands. Amen. Amen. The reason I respect blind Fanny Crosby. She never sold her gift out to the world. She kept it with God. Amen. Many of these people are eloquent singers, eloquent men, great men and so forth. Instead of using their talent for God, the devil's perverted them. They're over there working for Him. Amen. Personalities, radio and television personalities selling their stuff out out there for the world instead of giving it to God. Amen. Some of them come to church, go to church, wear a big fine robe, come out there and sing like that, go right back and sing rock and roll the next night. Amen. Amen. Such as singers that we know of belong to certain churches. Get out there and make them pictures and movie pictures. Get out there and sing rock and roll, the kings of rock and roll, and claim to be religious. It's a trick of the devil. Amen. One man had enough... Enough good common sense up here that said he's going to be a preacher. Get on Sunday morning and preach, and then he'd go down on and get on the radio broadcast and sing rock and roll songs and everything like else, and finally took a pistol and blow his brains out. I respect the man for doing it. That's right. That's right. He, he had more. He had as much sense as them hogs did anyhow. When they got the devil in, they run down the water and choked. Some people don't even have that much. I know you. I hate to be that hard, but uh, brother, sister, you got you got to drive the thing down and hit that nigga. Hit that fit now. This is the day that we're living in. I guess if Jesus called Herod an old fox and John called him a generation of vipers. <laughs> All right. They have large buildings, stained glass windows, eloquent preachers, paid singers. Yes, sir. What have they got in it? What's in it? Nothing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Stand up there and go out and wear shorts and come in and sing in the choir? You miserable hypocrite. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right. And you preacher that'll go to a meeting because they give you more money than they do at some other place. Amen. You rascal. Hallelujah. 
You're not a fit to be in a pulpit. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Money. If you can't appropriate so many thousand dollars, well, we can't come. Our, our, our managers and things will come around. If you can get up the money, we'll come. If I can't get full cooperation with everybody, I won't come. If everybody don't fully cooperate, all the churches, so I'll have plenty of money to make my debts meet, I won't come. Brother, a real man of God, a go with the Holy Ghost, let him read. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. He had to eat soda crackers and drink branch water. Amen. Amen. Right. All right. Good He's God. a real servant of God. Yes, but right. people tie themselves up with broadcast and radio and television, all kinds of things in the world, so they got to have that kind of money. Amen. Yes. Amen. Exactly, exactly right. right. See? That ain't God. No. He said, oh, you're rich. Have need of nothing. Sure. But the very thing you had need of, you didn't have. Amen. But you didn't know it. See? Rich have need of nothing. Paid to do the things that they're doing. Card playing. Oh, you say we got big congregations. Oh, sure. Yes, sir. Biggest congregation. Well, well you know the mayor of the city comes to our church. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, you know so-and-so when they come to town, they come to our church. Mm-hmm. We have all the celebrity in our church, yes. And let the poor, sainted, needy come into the church and they're rebuked to you. Yes, amen. You don't even want them there. You're afraid somebody say amen while you're preaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Like a little lady I read one time in a little book up here, she'd come into a church of her children. She'd raise them in an old-fashioned church back in the woods somewhere where they were really godly. So the uh, young fellow come in one day and married the girl, said he belonged to the outside church, you know, one of the big churches of the same denomination out in the city. So he told the mother he was a Christian, so he married the daughter and taken her out. Well, finally he got her weaned off from the little country church back in the mountains to out here in this great big fine church, same name. But back there they had the Holy Ghost out here, they had nothing. So then when they come in this great big fine church, so mother said one day she's coming down to, to see her daughter. Well, they wondered what in the world they'd do with her. So when she come down, she looked like something out of a relic book. One of little high neck dresses, you know, and long sleeves, and her hair peeled back, her onion face thick <laughs> like that, peeled back. You know, when she come down, she says, Well, hallelujah, honey. How y'all getting along? <laughs> well, she said, Now, in the morning, Sunday, said, Y'all going to meet me, ain't you? <laughs> the husband said, What will we do with her? <laughs> said, We can't take her over there like that. And said, well, I don't know what to do. Well, I said, Mother, I tell you, we owe, she said, but honey, I couldn't stay out of church. Surely there's a certain searching church out here. Oh, she, he said, so I seen it over on the corner there. I'll just go over. <laughs> and he said, oh, well, we'll just have to do it. So when they went in, they let her go in first. <laughs> Shamed of her. Here she come across the street, that little skirt, you know, and the Bible under her arm. Brother, she might not have had her name in who's who. <laughs> but I imagine she had her name on the Lamb's Book of Life. <laughs> that was the main name. When she walked in the church, she sat down back there, took her seat, on, and opened up the Bible, and she began to read, and everybody began to look around. Thought some kind of an antique had dropped out somewhere. <laughs> Looking at her like that, oh my, with all their fine clothes on, you know, the typical lady of sin. And their fine dresses and so forth. Look back, see this little mother sitting there, a big smile on her face, you know, reading the Bible. Yeah. And the pastor, after a while, after he got through all the other things, he finally had about 15 minutes to talk. So he got up and he said, The Lord is good. She said, Praise God, that's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> and everybody stretched their neck like a gander. Look around, who was it? And after a while, he said, <clears throat> He said, Christians and ever age should be violent, great, fine Christians or something on that order. She said, praise God, that's right. <laughs> and they all looked around and <clears throat> looked over to his deacon board. And the deacon board got the ID, goes back and takes the little woman with the arm and walks her out the door. Said, you're interrupting the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you're dead and don't know it. <laughs> Yes. Uh, oh, what your stained glass windows go to mount to. Yeah. What your fine plush pews and what's all your big uh, congregation your going as straight to hell as a martin to its box. Yeah. Oh, or if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're lost. Yeah. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom yeah. of God. Yeah. That's bitter. It's like I used to take castor oil. I said, Mama, I can't even stand it. She said, if it don't make you sick, it don't do you no good. So I guess that's about the way this do. Oh, if you would speak to them. Oh, 
uh, big fine buildings and so forth. Oh, they, they, uh, they, you go to church. You'd have to say, go to church and say, well, I tell you, you are Pentecostal. Oh, yes, uh -huh, sure, we're Pentecostal. Yes. You believe been born again? Yes. Well, I want to show you something. Oh, uh, look at this building. You know how much building, this building costs? That cost three quarters of a million dollars to put this up. You know, we used to didn't have it that way. We, we used to be down there at the alley. Mm -hmm. And they look around, you find out all these great things that they got. Yes, sir. And then they say, oh, we, we got all these big things. But they have no burden for lost souls. Amen. Amen. They always want to show you how much feeling they got. Look at our Sunday school record, how big it is. What good does that do if they haven't got the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Rich, increased in goods. Have need of nothing. That's what he said. You think that, but don't know that you're poor, wretched, miserable, blind, mm -hmm. naked, and don't know it. See? That's it. Oh, sure, they say, you know what? We used to be, the little church we used to use is in the back part. This is a big one now. And I'll tell you, no burden for souls, but they got to see that all these things are taken care of. The ladies' aid and all these other things all has to be taken care of, but no burden for lost souls. And Man, what, what this church has got into. They were not burdened for souls, but they were burdened with wealth. <laughs> That's right. They had the wrong burden. <laughs> they had a burden for their wealth, but not a burden for lost souls. The Scripture said, He didn't know that they were wretched, oh, <clears throat> miserable, blind. <clears throat> they think that they could take money and convert the world. Oh, if we could just get a program on that we could get a lot of money here, I believe we could go to convert the world. If some of the rich people in our church, Brother Brennan, if we could just get them to dig out, and I believe that we could start a society that would, um, that would go around and, and convert the world. We could take airplanes and drop literature all over Africa and things like that. If we just had some money. Brother, the world it won't be converted by money. The world will be converted by the Holy Ghost. Powerful preaching of the Holy Ghost and the cross will be the only thing that will convert the world. God's program is not money. It's the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what God's program is. For the lady you see in church age or any other church age. Yes, sir. They want the Holy Ghost. Oh, they say we are, have gold. It was gold, all right, but not the right kind. <laughs> they had plenty of gold, but not the right kind. Now, so they were commanded by Jesus. I know you have rich and have gold and have need of nothing, but I counsel thee to come by of me. Gold tried in the fire. A different kind of gold. Yeah. A gold that's tried in the fiery furnace. That went through the fire of death. That went through Calvary. Come out. A lot of this gold you got now is tarnishing. It'll canker. It'll rust. If you can mark down this James, St. James 5, 1 to 4. And you'll get what it is. Say, go ye a rich man now at the coming of the Lord. Weep and howl for your miseries has come up on your gold's cankered in you. Amen. See? That's the kind of gold that cankers. But the gold that Jesus gives is the Holy Spirit. The golden oil of the Spirit pours into your heart. And, and oh my, counsel of you come by me gold if you want to get rich. Oh, yes. Also, they were blind. Now, that's a bad way to be. I don't think these Christians were so blind as they was nearsighted. <laughs> I believe they were nearsighted. The only thing they could look at was their big building. The only thing they could look at was their big congregation. The only thing they looked at was a well carnished choir with all of its big robes and things. I think they were just nearsighted. <laughs> they couldn't see over their nose hardly. I don't think they were blind. They were just nearsighted. All they could see was their... Well, you know what? We belong to the so-and-so. They're big denominations. They're big crowds, many members. They're Sunday school. They're fine buildings. But they had need of the Holy Ghost, Jesus said. Amen. They needed the Holy Ghost. So the Lord said to them, I, if you are, eyes are so bad, and you're so nearsighted, and you can't see nothing but your big building here, and your big fine congregation, and you're the mayor of the city, and all coming to your church, you got the celebrity, and you forgot me. But if you are that blind and your eyes is that sore, I'll say some I save. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. 
See, it's strange them doctors of divinity didn't have any of that, isn't it? They had a lot of perfume (laughs) and a lot of theology, but they needed eyesight. God's Holy Spirit to massage your eyes and let them look for the coming of the Lord. Let them look at the Bible. Let them look at the Word. They know how to say Amen. Just exactly right. (laughs) They had the perfume. (laughs) They had all the ointments. But they needed eye salve. Yeah. Yeah. Said you need a little salve to go on your eyes and it'll open them up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Used right. to be when I was a little boy, I've told this, I believe, I might have said at the church. This comes to my mind now. <clears throat> I was raised down the mountains of Kentucky, partly. And we lived in an old clapboard house, Mom, here. And we had a, had a little old place upstairs. We had a mattress of, of straw. And then on top of that mattress of straw was a feather tick. I don't know why you know why a feather tick is or not, or a straw bed. Yeah. No bed was too poor. Pop and Mom had the bed and stood downstairs. <laughs> and so we climbed up a little ladder and got to the top. And Mom had put some, some uh, sometimes a piece of canvas over the covers and things to keep the, you know, you can stand, lay there and count the stars. <laughs> Two of them old clapboards put on the light of the moon, you know, and, and there's uh, big holes in the roof like that. And so when it would snow or something, or the rain would go, us little youngins would duck under this, uh, this piece of canvas, you know, keep the horse keep getting wet. And sometimes a draft through those holes, we, we, we'd get a cold, and our eyes would matter, you know, get all stopped up with cold, cold eyes. And so Mama called us the morning, come down. I'd say, I can't come, Mama, because my eyes is all mattered up. Got, got stuff in it, you know, uh, cold in my eye. Couldn't get them open, you know. A little young and laying there, me and Humpy and them trying to open up her eyes. We couldn't do it. <laughs> Blimey. Hallelujah. My grandpa was a trapper. He trapped coons, raccoons. And that was a cure-all at our house was coon grease. <laughs> we greased the shoes, <laughs> coon grease. And if you had the croup, they put a little turpentine on it and you had to swallow it. So for the croup. And then when her eyes got all matted up, Mom would take this up. All right, just a minute, honey. She ran out in the kitchen and get this big old cup of coon grease and set it on there and get it real hot. And she'd come up and massage her eyes. See? Until that, it done the work. And after a while, I got so I could see open my eyes, get the coon grease opened it up. I'll tell you, we've had an awful draft. <laughs> Glory! Yeah, Hallelujah! We got, there's been an awful cold to sweep the country. Hallelujah! A draft that said the of miracles are past and no such a thing as the Holy Ghost and no speaking in tongues. There's no baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. And no Glory. All kinds of drafts. This closed a lot of eyes with some kind of a spiritual coldness. Amen. It'll take more than coon grease to open yeah. their eyes, brother. It'll take a fresh baptism. Oh, yeah. 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 To massage your eyes so you can see. Take the near sightedness out of you so you can see the Word of God is true. Right. Oh, I counsel of you to come get some eyes saved from me. Kind of anoint your eyes. <laughs> the doctors of theology has their all the theology and their perfumes and things, but taking more of that. It takes the Holy Ghost to give the spiritual vision to see heavenly powers work. The Holy Ghost the salve of the Holy Ghost. Yes. A salve is a hard oil. We know that. And then the Holy Ghost is the oil of God. And all the theologies and the perfume. Oh, brother, dear, you're all right. There's nothing wrong with it. Everything's all right. But we have the biggest church there is in the city. That perfume won't work. No, <laughs> It'll make you see right along here near side and say, yes, we got the biggest church. But what about the judgment coming on? Amen. When God will make you answer. Yes. Yes. You lady of sin, uh, church members. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ain't Lord. speaking so much here, but I'm on tape and going across the world, you see. So speaking to about several million people. Amen. Time, you see. Let her so fly then, fly. that's it. Lady of sin, <laughs> lukewarm, backslidden, <laughs> nearsighted. <laughs> I don't know what all. Hallelujah. Amen. A mule's a hybrid. Amen. Amen. You ain't got no gumption to start with. <laughs> you can talk to him, you stick that big ears, I go, huh? Oh, oh, oh. He ain't no kindness to him. He's a hybrid. He's between a horse and a donkey. Yeah. That's what's the matter now. You put Nicolaitans and Lady Ossians together, you got a donkey again. Yeah. What we yeah. mean. That's right. They don't know you tell them about divine healing, baptism in Jesus' name. Say, oh, yeah. oh, my pastor don't, oh, oh. We don't read that as Presbyterians. Ignoramuses. 
That's not what you call it. But Larry, I hate a mule, but I tell you, I like a good, gentle, pedigreed horse. Boy, you can teach him something. You can teach him to bow and get in the circus and almost do like a human can because he's, he knows something. He's got a pedigree. A mule don't know who his pappy was or who his mammy was. He can't reproduce himself. That's why some of these old cold formal denominations, they can't never rise up again. As soon as the church goes into a denomination, it's dead. It never rises again. Amen. What is it? It's hybrid. <laughs> Martin Luther was all right, but when he organized, what did he do? Methodist is all right. When he organized, what did he do? Pentecost is all right, but when you organize it, what did you do? You hybrid it. You spread it into the Nicolaitan Catholic Church. Amen. Exactly what you done. Tuck up her form of baptism, tuck up her ways and actions. Yes. And the Bible said, you are a daughter to a whore, a harlot. Amen. A daughter of harlots. Uh, exactly right. Yes, amen. A good pedigreed horse. Hey, he's gentle. <laughs> oh, he's good. I like him. Yes. Put his head over his shoulders, loving, kind. Why, he knows who his pappy is. He knows who his grandpappy is. He knows who his grandpappy's pappy was. He go from on back, his pedigree. And I like to see a real pedigree Christian. Amen. Not packed his letters to Methodist last week and the Baptist this week and the Pentecostal this week and the Pilgrim Holies next week. He don't know who his pappy is or who his mammy is. Well, let me tell you, a man that's born to the Spirit of God can take you plumb back to the day of Pentecost. Amen. I can tell you, Hallelujah. his pedigree. Amen. 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 I want to be Pentecost on the top of my head to the soldier. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't mean denominational Pentecost. I mean the real power of the resurrection of Christ. Amen. The real Pentecostal blessing. Yes, sir. I say, open your eyes so we can look way back and see where it come from. <laughs> You're just looking what the church is today. Look back and see where it come from. Then keep moving towards God. You'll get away from Amen. it. Amen. Yes, sir. All right. I noticed another thing. It said they are naked. Naked. Don't know it. Sure. Oh, naked and don't know it. Now that person's in a miserable fix. Amen. If a man is wretched, blind, miserable, naked, now if he, if he knows it, he'll help himself. Amen. But if he don't know it, the poor fellow's mentally gone. Yeah. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. That was kind of strong. Yeah. Mentally gone. He doesn't know enough to help himself. You've seen somebody come down the street poor, miserable, blind, wretched, and naked, and you say, Brother, you are naked. Oh, am I? Oh, oh, brother, help me in somewhere. Help me to get clothes. But you walk up to them and say, Say, have you received the Holy Ghost since you be? What are you, Holy Roller? Well, say, yeah. what do you mean? Don't you talk to me like that. I'm That's Presbyterian right. Baptist. I'm the so and so and so and so. Naked and don't know it. Yeah. Amen. Now, I never said that. The Bible said that. That's right. Amen. To this age, naked and don't know it. Come buy some clothes for me, he said. Yeah. White raiment. Yeah. White raiment belongs to the saints. It's the righteousness of saints. Yeah. Yeah. Naked? Oh, sure. Yes, sir. Oh, you say, Brother Bram, not our church. It's the best dressed church in the city. I wouldn't doubt that. <laughs> some of the latest fashions, <laughs> the best cut materials, the latest Hollywood stars wear. So sexy, you attract the attention of every man on the street. Mm -hmm. my God, my God. Sure. One lady said to me, said, Brother Branham, do you mean to tell me now we buy these dresses out of the store? And that's all you can buy. I said, they still sell goods and make sewing machines. Yeah. <laughs> that's not much excuse for that. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery Amen. with her. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. Well, then if the woman dresses herself sexy and puts herself before a man, who's to blame for it? The woman is, she produced it. Exactly right. Now, you might be as pure as a lily to your husband. You may be a young girl that's never did anything wrong in your life. Be a virgin when you marry your husband. But if you dress like that and cause men to look at you like that, he's committed adultery with you already in his heart. That sinner looked at you. As a Christian, you may have the best cut clothes on in the city. The best of woolens. But it ain't becoming to a saint of God to dress like that. Amen. Oh, yeah. Don't come to a child of God. Oh, no. They say, well, they say, our church, you are well dressed. They said they was. They was rich, had need of nothing. Sure. 
Why, they said, even our pastor walks out with a great big robe on. All the choir walks out with a great big robe on. The devil rolled up under it. <laughs> That's right. Glory. Oh. Praise God. Praise mm. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Let it I better not brother. say that in neither. Let it fly, brother. Let it fly. All right. Oh, all these big things, robed choirs, paid choirs, had to pay them to sing. Had to give the preacher so much or he'll get another charge that pays him a little better. He'll call the trustee board together and say, Now, brethren, uh, uh, you've been very kind to me here. You give me so many hundred a week or something like that. But the other Presbyterian church or the Pentecostal or whatever it is across here, they have they've made me a promise that they'd give me so much more. Oh, my. Then what's a poor saint got? What chance have they got? Yeah. What's a poor little church filled with the Holy Ghost? What kind of a chance have they got? They couldn't afford nothing like that. So the Lord just rises you up something. It's <laughs> yeah. handpicked by Himself. That's right. Fills it with the Holy Ghost and sets Him as a gentle overseer over it. <laughs> Says down, he said, I counsel of thee to come and buy white raiment from Him. The Bible said, uh, the white robes are the rights of the saints. Now, I believe we, let's get about the, about the 19th verse now. I believe it's about the 20th verse we're on, the best I can see. Yeah, yeah. And closing on this. Now be real, quiet now and listen now while we're doing this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to set with me on my throne, even as I also overcome and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Amen. This is one of the most outstanding statements that I've ever seen in the New Testament. I want you to notice. I stand at the door and knock. This is generally used, a quotation, for the appeal for sinners. Is that right? We tell sinners Jesus is at the door knocking. But here... He's knocking at the church door. For He wants to walk with them. But they, with their organization and worldliness and coldness, had excluded Him. He's on the outside of the church. Now remember, in the first of the church ages, as we close, He was walking among the seven golden candlesticks. Is that right? The seven church ages. And at the end here, we find him outside of what church? The Lady O.C. Amen. The Lady O.C. in church, outside, they had excluded him. While he was standing on the outside, trying to get back in. What a pitiful picture. The Savior of the world. Standing outside of the church that he bought with his own blood. Shame upon him. I stand at the door and knock. After being pushed out or ousted, then trying to get back in, crawls back and knocks at the door. This is the most striking record in the New Testament. I think there's nothing could be any more sadder than this. Amen. To see the Savior of the world tuck out of His own church, the Lady of Sin Age. After he done told them what they did, their richness and everything, and what they were and how they were lukewarm and so forth, and they, they, uh, they he didn't have to spew them out; they spewed him out. Amen. And here was all of that still knocking at the door, trying to get back in. What for? To give him eternal life. Amen. The very ones that killed him at Calvary, he was trying to save their soul. It's the most pathetic picture I ever seen in my life, ever thought of. Excluded. What was he excluded from? Now listen, friends. If this isn't striking, get a picture of it. Let it sink down in your heart. Our Savior. When he was on earth, he was excluded from his own nation. He is rejected. He was excluded. 
The world excluded him and crucified him. And now from his own church, he's excluded. Yeah. Amen. He isn't wanted anywhere. Amen. Had no need of him. They got a denomination. They didn't need him. They got a pope. What they need with him anymore? They got an archbishop, a general overseer. They had no use for the Holy Ghost anymore. Amen. They didn't need that no more. Christ, the Holy Spirit. They didn't need him. So they're, I don't believe they just up and throwed him out because they hadn't missed him. Amen. They hadn't missed him. Amen. Because they were still singing songs to him. Amen. The preacher was still talking about him. So they hadn't missed him. But their own worldliness and their organization organizing, saying the days of miracles is past and there's no such a thing as this and that. I asked you, every revival that ever come, any of you historians, now down through here these churches, every revival that ever come, the, it was always brought outside of an organization. Amen. Any man that ever started the revival was outside the organizations and every time a, a revival started, they had signs and miracles of speaking in tongues and healings and so forth like that taking place. Amen. As soon as that founder died, then the organizer made an organization out of it and went right dead and God never fooled with it no more. Amen. That's exactly right. And here he is at the last church age standing outside the door. Amen. God Almighty. That, that breaks my heart to think of that. My Lord. Standing outside the door of his own church after being pushed out by worldliness and coldness and denomination and indifference, standing outside the door knocking, trying to get back in. Amen. When I thought that a while ago, I just leaned over on my table and started crying. I thought, I've often thought, when Jesus was sitting in that old Pharisee's house there, nobody paid any attention to him, but he had dirty feet. They didn't meet him at the door and wash his feet and anoint him, taking the manure and stuff where he'd been walking, his garment sweeping around, brought that old stink of the road where horses and things would travel, and, and got that stink on that always washed the feet. That was a custom. And a foot wash flunky stayed at the door, and when a man come, they would wash his feet and reach up there and get a little pair of sandals and fit him, put it on, and they anointed his head and, his, and made him smell good, and they're burning his neck from the rays of the sun. Combed back his hair. He went in and to welcome at the guest. Now here's the way. Stand up here a minute, Pat. I'm going to show you something. Here's the way they did. They welcome it like this. I believe. All I hear. I believe it's like something on this order here. They welcome it like this. and hug one another. And he was welcome. But when Jesus come to this feast, just like he come to the Pentecostal feast here, somebody had missed him. They were so interested in their affairs. The bishops and so forth was there. Jesus was invited. But nobody washed his feet. And there he was sitting over the corner. They hardly knew he was there. Amen. With his feet stinking. Dirt all over him. Dusty. And then there's a poor old harlot down the street. Who come up there. She only had a little bit of money in a sack. And she looked over and she seen Jesus sitting there with dirty feet. It broke her heart. She said, that's the man that forgive that woman her sins. That's the man that I've heard that done the healing. Why don't they pay attention to him? Because the bishops and all of them around, they asked him out. There he, they invited him to come. That's what we do. We invite him to come to our meetings, but then when we come, we're ashamed of him. Oh, I wouldn't stay and say, praise the Lord. Oh, that's the Jones as they think that's a holy roller. You hypocrite. Amen. 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 That's right. I'm afraid I'd speak of tongues and they call me a tongues man. You are a miserable wretch. Amen. Amen. I remember this is going in. You're a miserable, wretched, poor, naked, and blind and don't know it. Jesus sitting there with unwashed feet and a street harlot. I could see her go down. Let's, let's talk, take her for a minute. I could see her go down to the store and she'd say, I, and the tears begin to run down her face and she said, I, I can't do it. If, if I take this uh, stuff up there, he don't know where I got this money. He knows how I got it. But it's the only thing I got. That's all he wants. Amen. That's all you Amen. You don't care. You just come. Nothing in my arms I bring. So she got some ointment and she brought it up. And she got up there and she thought, oh, if I could just see him. And then she slipped in and got around the door somewhere. And no, they hadn't made him welcome. So she took the alabaster box and broke it and put it on, her, on his feet and began to wash his feet. And she got to crying. Oh, it's bound to be him. That's the one I've read of always in the Bible. I know he recognized it. And the first thing you know, 
What beautiful water for his feet. Amen. Tears of repentance Amen. dropping Amen. off on his feet. Amen. She didn't have no rag to wipe his feet with it. So she reached up and got her hair, pretty curls all broke down, tears running down her face like that. She washed his feet. And once in a while she would kiss his feet, wash his feet like that. Jesus with dirty feet and nobody paying any attention to it. And today he packs a dirty name as a holy roar, something other like that. And man ain't got the gall to stand up for him. Amen. Hallelujah. This consecrated cross I'll bear till death shall set me free. I'll take the way with the Lord's despised few. I've started it with Jesus. Oh, Lord, take me through. Take me through, Lord. No matter what it costs. Yes, amen. I have, like Jacob, a pillow of stone. What difference does it make? Amen. What he did for me. This poor prostitute there, crying, weeping. And the first thing you know, here stood the Simon, the big God, all, uh, got him to come down and said, <clears throat> He shows whether he's a prophet or not. You know what kind of a woman it was, that hypocrite. Amen. Amen. So after she got to, and Jesus never moved his feet. You sat and looked at her and watched her. Oh, I like that. Amen. It's not the big things that we do, it's the little things we leave undone sometimes. Amen. He watched her, just watched her sit there. Nobody's paying attention to him. Finally, her in there crying and washing his feet, kind of paid attention to her, got the attraction of the people, and he just watched her and never said a word. And old Simon stand back there and said, <clears throat> You see whether he's a prophet or not, don't you? I told you. I told you. If he was a prophet, he'd know who that woman was. You see, we were the great church here, you see. We know so. We know he's not a prophet, he'd know it. After, he, after she got through, them tears of repentance running down her face, Amen. washed Jesus' feet. He, I believe he felt a little refreshed. Amen. Oh, God, I'd Amen. like to have been there. Amen. I would wash him again. <laughs> yes, sir. Boy, wouldn't a woman have a hard time wiping her feet with her hair today? She'd have to stand on her head to do it. Get that hair on her head. That's her coming off. But there, Jesus' feet. Nobody paying critical, setting disgraced. That stink on his feet. She washed it. After he got after he got through, he looked down at her as if saying, All right. Looked towards said, Simon, I got something to say to you. Amen. You invited me here, and you never met me at the door. You didn't give me any water to wash my feet with. You never anointed my head when I come in. Take the parch of the sun off of me. You never give me any kiss of welcome. Want to come in? But this poor woman, oh, this outsider, a prostitute on the street, she had no water to wash my feet, and she washed them with her tears. She had nothing to wipe them off with, so she took her hair. She wiped them. She's continually kissed my feet. Now I want to say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven her. <laughs> That's right. Never said nothing about his. Your sins, which are many, are forgiven. And today, when Jesus is standing outside the door of the Pentecostal organizations, Baptist organizations, Methodist organizations, trying to get back in with Pentecost again, and the people are passing him by. As you, your worldliness and things has pushed him out of the church, he's standing trying and crying to get back in again. Oh, and, oh God, it's the most pathetic God. thing I've ever seen in my life. Had no need of it. Him outside, knocking, trying to get in. That's the same thing he's trying to do. Why? Why? He was outside. They never throwed him out. They still sang of him, preached about him, but had never missed him in their presence. <laughs> That's right. They were going right on. Why? They were nearsighted. They looked at their big building. They were rich. They were looking at the great organization they belonged to, trying to build it up, get more members to come in. And they didn't miss him. No, no. They didn't miss speaking in tongues. They didn't miss the great powerful messages of God who cuts down to the heart and circumcises the heart, tears off the things of the world and shucks you like a piece of corn. Amen. Oh, they, if you preach like that in the church, it out you out. Amen. 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 Yes. And that's the way the Holy Ghost preached. Amen. Jesus said, you generation of vipers, you, <laughs> you snakes in the grass, and John did too, and great anointed man, always tore the hide off of them. Amen. Right. But they didn't miss him because they didn't have that. 
See? Amen. So they had a little flower, little something, patting them on the back, said, you just join, put your name right here, and, and we'll take you in your membership, and you go get your paper from the other church, and we will receive you, and, and so forth. Now, your pledge will be how much each year? See? That's it. Yeah. Rich have need of nothing. Oh, but you have need of the greatest thing and haven't got it. Jesus standing outside trying to get back in with Pentecost. What do you think would happen tonight in the Methodist church? If the Holy Ghost fell upon the church and they began to shout and jump and speak in tongues and act like a bunch of drunk people, well, uh, the conference would throw that Methodist church out of the conference. Yeah, amen. Yeah. You know that. What would happen in the Baptist church if it happened? Same thing. Pentecostals. Well, there's many of them that happen the same thing. Yes. Sure. Yes, yes sir. They wouldn't put up with that nonsense and say, why, they even spoiled our new carpets. <laughs> my, my, what a miserable bunch they are. Amen. That's right. Amen. Well, all right. He was once with them. He walked with them in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And here is the answer. The nominations and their worldly things, their bishops, cardinals, and all their worldliness had ousted him out and they'd never missed him. Amen. And the church, now what are we going to do to get him back in? <coughs> if he's outside the Pentecostal church now, what are we going to do to get him back in? Will it take a unanimous vote of the people to bring him back? Will it take electing of a new pope, new cardinal? Or maybe it'll take, uh, it'll, it'll take, Rising up a new denomination. That'll never take it. No. That'll never do it. A new denomination won't do it. A new, uh, 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 a new cardinal won't do it. A new pastor won't do it. A well-paid evangelist won't do it. There's nothing in the world can be done but you yourself. How do we get him in? Not by a vote. No, sir. We don't vote Jesus back in because he won't come in. Here it. Here it is. If any man will hear my voice and open the door. Now we know what the door is then. If any man will open the door, hear my voice, not now if any church, if any organization, no sir, he don't deal with them. They're dead and gone to begin with. He hates it. He always hated it. He said he hated it. He hates it yet tonight. But if any man, any Methodist man, any Baptist man, any Presbyterian man, any Catholic man, any Church of God man, Nazarene man, Pentecostal man, any man that will hear my voice and will open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Amen. That's the message to the Pentecostal church. Not try to revive the Pentecostal organization, but revive the Pentecostal blessing in the individual's heart. That's the only way. And I will sup with him and he me. What does the messenger to the church, message to the church teach us then? Uh, teach, uh, teach us not the growth in the spirit. No, sir. Decline of the spirit. We have a decline all the time. The, method, the, the messengers to the church and the message to every church age condemn denominationism. Every message to the church, the church is constantly on the decline and wouldn't listen to it. The, the message to the church was disregarding denominations and it made hybrid Christians, Amen. so-called. That's right. Who know nothing about God or the Holy Ghost. That's as true as I stand in this platform tonight. The fine lukewarm members only to be spewed out of his mouth. Paul warned the Gentiles was a branch. Now, I want some of you, if you will, to turn to Romans 11th chapter, the 15th to the 27th verse, just so you can mark it down, y'all. And that being it's late, I will quote this to you now just before leaving because it's a... Now, Romans, if you want to put it down, 11, 15 to, 20, uh, to 27. Paul told them, talking to the Gentiles there, the Romans, he said, if God... Now listen, as we're closing on the church ages... Paul said, If God did not spare the original olive tree, but cut it off because of unbelief. Amen. Is that right? Amen. What caused them to be cut off? Because they rejected Pentecost. Amen. Is that right? Yes. On the day of Pentecost, 
They made fun and blasphemed the Holy Ghost. When Jesus is here on earth, he said, they talk, called him Beelzebub, said he was a devil, he's a fortune teller, whatever more. He said, I forgive you for that, but when the Holy Ghost has come, don't you speak against it. Because you speak against it, it'll never be forgiven you. And remember, when Jesus commissioned his disciples not to go to the Gentiles, is that right? Amen. But go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. How did they condemn themselves? By blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Amen. Calling the Spirit of God an unclean thing. Made fun of them when they were dancing in the Spirit and so forth on the day of Pentecost. That same city they made fun of it. Titus killed them in there and their blood ran out the gate. Which way. They eat their own children and everything in that same century. That's right. One of the greatest nations of the world become the lowest and scattered to four winds of the earth. Because why? Unbelief. Amen. And that was the original stump, the original tree. Israel. Did old Paul say there? Who's got the scripture right there? Got it, Pat? Stand up and read from the 15th and 27th verse. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not thyself against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. Listen, unbelief, all right? Go ahead. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature, and were graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Mm. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles yes. be come in. Amen. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sin. Amen. You get it. Paul said, If Israel come up and seen the signs here of the Holy Spirit, and was cut off, remember, because they rejected Paul's message, baptism in Jesus' name, Repentance and baptism in Jesus' name. Signs and wonders following the believer. And they rejected it. And they said, Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Is that right? Amen. Let's see, I believe it was at uh, where they first called Christians. It was at um, Antioch. Ephesus. Antioch. Or, Antioch. 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 Now, now if, um, if the first tree was holy, its branch is holy, the original tree, and because they disbelieved the Pentecostal message... That Paul was preaching. Is that so? Amen. God cut them off Amen. and took a wild olive tree, which was the Gentiles, us, and grafted us in that we might live off the, bre the substance of that tree. Amen. Now, how much more in this day when we are rejecting the Pentecostal message that's come down through the church ages, how much more is God able to take that old wild tree off of it anyhow and let the other come in because he will reject it because of unbelief? Amen. Now, dovetail that with the lesson this morning. You know where we're standing now, don't you? Yes. We're at the end time 
for the taking away of the Gentile church, the rapture for it, and the issuing in of the Holy Ghost to come upon the Jews and Jesus to make Himself known to seal 144,000. There you are. Bringing back the original tree back into the blessing into Israel again. Jesus ain't going to stand outside of your door and knock all the time. There's a time when you'll get enough and turn away. Then you'll do the knocking, but you'll never find it. Come while it is time. Come while there's a knock. Amen. Don't you compromise with anything less than the baptism of the Holy Ghost Amen. like they got at Pentecost Amen. with the same type of water baptism, the same things that they did there. Don't you let nothing put anything in your heart less than that. Amen. Amen. Now to you, my Catholic friends, let me tell you something. You believe in the Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary being the mother of Jesus Christ had to go up to Pentecost and be filled with the That's Holy right. Ghost. Amen. And she act like a drunk person. She was among them, 120. Yeah. Had the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues and acting like a drunk woman. Yes. Out Amen. there on the Spirit Amen. of God. And if the Virgin Mary had to do that in order to get into glory, how are you going to get in anything less than that? Amen. 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 Oh. Praise, Praise Amen. the Lord. Think of it. That's right. Baptist, that Baptist preacher back here wants to be sure that said to the Baptist all the time. That's for anybody. Amen. Don't care who it is. So just joining church and saying a creed and going to church every Sunday morning won't do you one speck of good. Amen. You're only making a mock out of God. Amen. Either be a real Christian or don't be anything at all. Amen. Be either hot or cold. Yes. Either be out because you can't be. You never did see a black, white bird. You never did see a drunk, sober man. You never did see a sinner saint. Amen. No, you don't. They don't make them. Right. You're either filled with the Holy Spirit and God living in you, or you're not at all. You, you are or you are not. Amen. So therefore, you must, you must remember that Jesus stands at your door and remember God's promise here that He will in these days, because of what? Rejecting what caused Israel to be cut off. The original tree. Amen. Because they rejected Paul's Pentecostal Amen. message. Amen. And do you believe this is the last church age? Yes. The Bible said so. And what's that going to happen to them? They're going to be cut off because of rejecting the Pentecostal message. Amen. And then God will return again to the Jews. Amen. And all of Israel then will be saved. Because He'll take them as a nation. Yes. Yeah. Not as an individual, but to you and I, it's individual because He come to the Jews, Acts, in the book of Acts, He came to the Gentiles to take a people out of the Gentiles for His name, yeah. His bride. A people, one here, one there, one over here. And He deals with us as individuals, regardless of race, creed, or color. Yeah. He deals with us as individuals. It's His bouquet that He'll put on His altar. But... As the Jews, He always dealt with Israel as a nation. They are a nation of people. His nation. I'm glad tonight that we had this message. And I'm so glad that you attended. And your attendance has been so appreciated by me. I'm grateful to Almighty God for Him letting me see what I have seen and being able to deliver to this church. And now it's off my heart. For some time... The Holy Spirit dealt on my heart. I couldn't shake it away. I just had to go with it. There's two things I felt led to do. Go to Shreveport, Louisiana for a meeting with Brother Moore. My wife sitting there, I can tell you, for weeks I almost cried. Who want to go to Shreveport? Why? And anybody who was there at Shreveport know why now. they never seen or heard anything like it. Preachers coming from everywhere, Baptists and different kinds. One man said, start putting his hand on the icebox. And the Holy Spirit come up on him and said, Go to Shreveport, Louisiana. He'll be told you there what to do. I told him my name, the word of fine. He said, He'll tell you what to do. I said, The pool's open at the bottom of the steps. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And there. So, things like that. People speaking and, and prophecies and things, of predicting things that happened right there among us. Then I said, I must go to Jeffersonville and write this book. Because I don't know how much longer I've got to be here. But if I express this and it goes on writing, after I'm gone, the words will live on. Yes. 
Yes. I've got the history wrote down which will go in the book and I come here to bring it before the church to find the inspiration of the Holy Spirit because I didn't know these things myself. That's true. That's in the name of the Lord. That's true. I did not know them. Now, I feel delivered. I feel that God has brought us a message. I believe that we're at the end of the road. I believe that the hour is here for the manifestation of God to be made known among us. And I don't know how much longer it'll be, but the hour is soon at hand. We'll be looking for that great one to rise. He might come in my day. He might come in the younger day. I don't know. He might be right among us now. We can't tell. The Holy Spirit is here to lead us to that time. And when this leader will take his order, he'll still be anointed of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Elijah will, of course. That will come. But he will be a, the leader that will turn the hearts of the children, or the hearts of the uh, children, back to the Father's message. Amen. Back to our Heavenly Father's message on the day of Pentecost when he poured out his Spirit, which that little line... I brought it as close as I could by the history of the Bible and show that that thing has come right down through the church ages. And that's it today. Show that denominations is a curse before God. I hope that's settled in your mind. By Bible, by the Acts of the Apostles, by the history and all. That, and there is never one time that God ever organized His church. The mother of organized churches is the Roman Catholic hierarchy. Roman Catholic Church. It's the mother of the organizations. And as soon as the revival breaks in any Protestant group, they go right back and do the same thing. And the Bible said she was a whore and her, she had daughters, which was churches off of her. They had to be women to be harlots. Amen. There she is. So we're setting. But he also said this. Fear not, little flock. Amen. It's your Father's good will to give you the kingdom. Amen. So may we all at that day, you Methodists, Baptists, whatever you are, whosoever will open the door, I'll come in and sup with him. Amen. May we be counted, my brethren, my sisters. May we be counted that little flock at that day. May we be part of that little flock that will be waiting when he comes. As he comes to pick it up across the world. For the... The rapture will be universal. There will be two in the bed, I'll take one. Two in the field, I'll take one. Shows it will be night on one side of the earth and daylight on the other. See? So it's two will be in bed, two will be in the field. See? I'll take one of each. And as I said this morning, you'll be riding down the road some of these days talking to mother and you'll look around and she'll be gone. Yes. You'll be sitting at the table drinking your, your uh, coffee or eating your breakfast or, or something, and the first thing you will look around and Dad isn't there no more. That's exactly right. Uh, it's coming and we don't know what time, but the thing is, when it's over, then it's over. Amen. And there's nothing else you can do about it. Right, amen. You say, I've heard that a long time, but you're going to hear it your last time. Amen. That's right. Yes. It's going to happen because it's the word of the Lord. Amen. And remember, has it failed any time through these eight nights that I've been preaching, but what, what Jesus said here has come to pass and done every church age just amen. exactly. Uh, and we see this church age right into it, and at the very hour, Hour. Even this morning in typing the virgins, the very time that the sleeping virgin, now I remember the Bible said that the sleeping virgin, when the cry went out, behold the bridegroom coming, the coming of the Lord, the preaching of the word. And then what happened? The time is at hand, atomic bombs, everything ready. The preachers run into the streets and begin to scream the message. And as soon as they do, the big church then, the sleeping virgin said, oh, well, we've been presbyterian a long time. <laughs> Maybe we would study and find out. Yes, you know, I believe we do need the Holy Ghost. And they're writing pamphlets and everything about it now. Start now. And they said, uh, uh, would you give us some of it? And they said, no, we just got enough for ourselves. So when they went to get the Holy Ghost, went to pray up like the churches, the big fine churches are doing today, the organizations. When they went to get the oil, the bridegroom came. Amen. Amen. So they're trying to get it right now. Great churches, organizations, great international meetings about it. And the, and the organized church is saying, we got to get back to the Pentecostal blessing. We got to have divine healers in the church. We got to have speakers with tongues. We got to have interpreters of tongues. We got to have all these spiritual gifts in our church. And we're just going to have to start meetings and start doing it. They're getting counsel started to do it. While they're gone to do that, it's at that very time. Yes. 
that the bridegroom come and got those who had the oil in their lamps and went away. Then they come and what happened? They were cast into outer darkness, the great tribulation period, where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. While the bride is in heaven. Oh my. Then at the end of that three and a half years, he will come like Joseph did and make himself known to his brethren. they will cause a weeping all over and they'll say, they'll separate their families and weep and, and say, where'd you get them scars? And, and they'll pierce the ones that pierced him. She'll see him and he'll make himself known to his brethren. Now he's trying to make himself known to his church and they push him outside and he's still standing knocking. He said, is there one more in there? One that would open and let me come in and talk with you? Oh, I'm glad. So thankful that about many years ago, around 28 years ago, I felt that knock on my heart. Amen. And I, he come in. I've been supping with him and he with me ever since. And I received the Pentecostal blessing, received the Holy Ghost, was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The only time I ever was baptized in my life, once, when I was just a little boy, nobody could tell me there's three gods. No, you couldn't poke that down, mine. You can't give it to anybody that knows any, knows what God is. Amen. That's right. So when I baptized, a Baptist preacher baptized me. I said, I want to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dr. Roy E. Davis baptized me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just a boy. That's right. So I, I believe it. I've stayed with it. And I know it's the truth. It's God's Amen. eternal word. Amen. Amen. Right. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. I'm one of them. One of them. I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them. Though these people may not learn to be or boast of worldly fame. They have all received their Pentecost, baptized in Jesus' name, and are telling now both far and far. His power is yet the same. I'm so glad that I can say
noisy bunch. and mercies to us, the unworthy ones, to think that you would confirm your message now, Lord. Promise the people, I pray, God, that your mercies rest upon them. If there be any here that doesn't know him as Savior, you want to find him right now in your hearts as the Savior. Would you stand to your feet while we offer prayer for you? He said that he would made this message there and he wanted to confirm his word to you. Uh, if there's some here that doesn't know him and hasn't oh, received his spirit, he's speaking God. to you. Yeah. All right. That one back there, would you just stand up to your feet, brother? He wants to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Is that it, brother? God bless you. Stand where you are. Is there another would like to rise up and say, I would like to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. God bless you, brother. God bless you. It's good. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Just remain on your feet. Glory. Someone else that would like to receive the Holy Ghost, be baptized like to be remembered in our prayers right now to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Is there another before I say what I'm fixing to? Would like to stand and be included? Amen. Oh, would you be numbered as one of His foes? Would you do it? Be spotless within. Hallelujah. Be watching and waiting that sight to behold. He Coming again. Oh, He's coming again. Would you want to be his foe or would you want to be his child? An angry God on that morning. Nothing but the blood of Jesus will he recognize. You'll never your church membership will be nothing to him. Amen. Nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. Oh precious is that flow. That makes me white as snow. No other mount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Is 
righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Is there another? Oh, precious. Nothing can stand, brother, sister. The world's sinking. She's gone. the fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Now, friends, you're standing on your feet are, are trying to accept the sweetness of the Lord Jesus. The same Bible that tells us that these things would happen brought them to pass just exactly the way He promised it. Yes. Now, the promise, said Peter, isn't to you and to your children. And to them it's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. You stood up because you want the blessing of God on you. Amen. And as His servant, I pray for you. I pray that God will give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I wonder if you could do this in your heart. If you're sincere. If you would make this promise to God. God, I from this time standing on my feet seeking this baptism of the Holy Ghost, I shall constantly pray and wait until you fill me with the Holy Ghost. Will you make that promise to God by raising your hands? I will constantly pray, constantly, until you fill me with sweetness and goodness of the Spirit. I offer my prayer for you now as we bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, they are the trophies of your presence. They know that these words are true because they are yours. They know that they have been given by the Holy Spirit because they are the Word of God. And they have been convinced that they need you, that they need sweetness of the Holy Spirit in their life to give them overcoming power. And they will receive power from on high, receive the power to live a Christian life, to receive power to overcome temptations. As the song we were just singing, they gathered in the upper room and was praying in His name. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost and power for service came. That's what they want, power for service to come upon them. I pray thee, Father, as your servant, as you see them raising their hands, they have made a pledge to you and a promise that they shall never cease. They'll not lay it aside. But they will pray until you fill them, Lord, to a satisfying potion of thy holy presence in their life. I offer my prayer in their behalf, Lord, as your servant, that they will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray that they'll not leave this church until that happens. That they'll be right here until each soul is filled with the Holy Ghost. Grant it, Lord. Thou art God, the Almighty. You was manifested in the flesh to take away the sins of the world. You arose on the third day, ascended on high. And you're here tonight and amongst us in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we pray, Father, that you, our precious Lord, will fill each one of them with your own self. And may they be a, a blessing to your kingdom and in the world that is to come. And one day when you finally reach the end of the road, that may be today yet. We don't know when it will be, but may I be able, Lord, be counted among those who goes in the rapture. May these be the ones that go in the rapture. May every person, divine presence, and all that's filled with the Spirit that belongs to God go in the rapture. Take these in tonight, Father. They are yours now. I commit them to Thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I want the rest of you that are standing by these people that has the Holy Spirit, raise up, lay your hands on them. The fountain
raise up your hands to God and just give Him praise. Say, thank you, Lord. I raise to my feet. I give you praise. I thank you for your blessings, for your goodness, and for giving me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For giving us. You keep your promise. Aren't you happy? We find many people who can't understand why we are so happy and free. We crossed over Jordan to Somebody say, Praise the Lord. This is like Him, Lord. Just breathe and hold. 